I thought I'd give a quick talk on butterflies and C++, which is basically, you know, a follow up on my last lightning talk at meeting C++ 2019. And maybe you remember back then I told you I would be, you know, taking nice pictures of butterflies. And I've been doing this uh, since then, more or less. But also, I had made the decision that I wanted to do more than nice pictures. I wanted to contribute to the effort of conservation. And so I started with monitoring conservation and um, yeah, being involved in this field. And this has been an awesome journey and it's actually too long to give a lightning talk on, so I will you know, limit myself to it, to showing you some pictures and explaining you uh, what this has to do with C++. Now, first, in the monitoring tours, I do monitor every species, uh, but there are two species which are special. This is the first one, um, which already was here on the other slide. Uh, this is uh, the Grayling or Ockerbinneger Samtfalter of Deutsch, uh, which is a very threatened species because this is a species which lives in heath and needs open sand in uh, the landscape, which is very rare in our nowadays. So uh, this is one of the of the rare species which flies in my county. And I'm more or less with the last years trying to see where they where everywhere, like where, where do they fly? You know, like this is this is my job in the monitoring uh, to to track them down and to see how, how many can I find of those butterflies. And these are kind of hard to find if it's not like on uh, on a heath or on, on um, other blooming plants. Um, and the second species I am looking for is of Deutsch Declan Eisvogel, or in English, uh, the White Admiral. And um, this is a butterfly which is not in the, in the heath. It's a butterfly which is more in the forest and more in the uh, moist parts of a forest. So it's, uh, you know, close to rivers. And um, one of the projects I'm like, next year I'm going to start because during the pandemic, I have not been as much on the lakes. I will look in the lake uh, districts where I usually uh, take other pictures uh, during this winter if I find this butterfly there too, um, because that is still an unexplored corner of my uh, county for this butterfly. And yes, yeah, this butterfly flies only during summer and the other species also, it's just a few weeks. Um, but then, of course, you always need to be a bit lucky to find those butterflies. Um, like, for example, this is uh, basically like 100 or 200 meters away where I did find a different uh, blueling species two years ago, and I haven't seen it since. And there I found this uh, couple. And back then it also was a couple, but this is a different species. This is Argus bloiling. And Argus is kind of the the uh, Latin name also, so it's uh, I'm not sure what the the English name is. Uh, Blue links are not like my specialty, those English names. But then also, and here it gets now interesting. I take pictures like that. I am in monitoring mode, and monitoring is has changed my habits on what I take for pictures. I take pictures of every single butterfly I I see. I count them. I track that in an app. Uh, called observation, and um, for that I kind of you know try to have images which uh, then you know I later load up uh, into the website, and for that I cut out the butterfly itself because the, the image itself is too big, and uh, then you, you have a result like this, which of course you know that's not a picture you took because it's a pretty picture. That's a picture because I you know was documenting the species was here and that's part of the work I do and uh, this is um, for like over time this work becomes valuable so if I do it every year and other people do it every year uh, the, the collection of the data is very important for conservation efforts um, and so I began asking myself does STD find find butterflies and I'm not sure yet um, but I have a friend which is also concerned about uh, SCD find, and so we're investigating that. Um, but for for now, um, 
I plan, you know, to to use C plus plus to to write something, which um, makes my job a bit easier. The the monitoring, another another uh, example here. In the monitoring, I get home in summer after a long day of uh, like hiking for like six hours sometimes, and I have like. 50 to 80 pictures of butterflies and i don't want to edit them all by by myself manually anymore i want to have a program which does exactly this job i want uh, some some um, image recognition and i have an example for that which trains something and then uses that and i want to uh, kind of you know put that in a cute program and uh, make that as open source and kind of you know kind of work maybe with, with some of the folks at me, C++ Online, um, together to have a little bit of fun there and then have uh, a little bit less work with pictures in summer. Um, and uh, I got uh, also part of this work is Caterpillars, and I'm not sure if, like, if that software also will, would be able to handle Caterpillars, but uh, that's another field where I have you know been very active this year because I got a macro lens. And with the macro lens, I suddenly am able to document them, and suddenly I keep seeing them. And for the uh, monitoring, uh, a lot of species I found for moths uh, through the caterpillars. And this is, I think, one of the best finds in this year. This is a very rare species, uh, which also hadn't been found in that corner for, for a few years. And um, I hope to be able to see and find this again next year and maybe to find out a bit more about uh, how how big the population of that uh, moth in that corner is. Um, this is a very, very uh, easy to find, not easy to find caterpillar, but this is a more in the he's uh, the um, emperor moth or kleines Nachtfrauenauge of Deutsch. It's very, uh, you can fly, see them flying the butterfly, the, the moth fly in, 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 the, in the dawn in um, April, sometimes already in March, depends on the weather. And uh, the caterpillar, it's like really, really uh, well hidden in the heath. But once you know have an eye for it and you keep looking in the heath, you you, you keep finding them there. They're kind of way more often than other caterpillars in the heath. Um, and then um, in July, I heard the voice of a bird on one of the areas where I'm actually monitoring butterflies. And it was directly like for me clear that this could be the species, a European bee eater. And that piqued my interest to, to, to get a good picture of that bird. And I would not have dreamed to get this picture because this picture is also with a, a rare butterfly, which is hard to to find for monitoring purpose. Um, and so to, to basically kind of get it delivered by air, uh, that, that's, that's awesome. That's, that's one, I think one of the best pictures I took this year. And um, yeah, I, I'm going to just end with this picture. And uh, this is basically what I do now for butterflies. I will you know, have a bit of uh, more pictures and uh, probably a talk which I prepare for that too. Uh, you know, uh, make this a project where people can help us and we can like, you know, uh, build something which uh, helps with monitoring there. And um, 